Beneath the great dome of Paris's Grand Palais, Chanel is gearing up to present its 2018 Haute Couture collection. As ever, the décor is sumptuous, with the banks of the Seine meticulously recreated. At Chanel, Haute Couture is all about showing off the very best of the brand's ancestral savoir-faire, while keeping an eye firmly on the future. We've got just 20 minutes to make a strong impression around the world. Nowadays it's mainly other people commenting on what you're doing. 99% of what's said about Chanel is said by other people. So these people need to be shown something amazing. They need to be both seduced and thrilled by what we're doing. But in order to be able to do that, you need the most important thing, the thing that really counts. You need a strong collection, one that makes sense and which communicates the values of the brand. The starting point for any Chanel collection is Karl Lagerfeld's sketches. He'll then discuss them with the label's workshop director, Olivier Doucher, who translates them into finished products with the help of her team. When we get a model to try a piece for the first time, it's always in tulle. Like this one. For example, drawing number 34 corresponds to this piece. We create drawings, but we don't necessarily decide on the embroidery or even the fabric. It depends. It's at the first try stage that we choose both the embroidery and the fabric. We also sometimes choose the lining, and we discuss certain details that may appear on a number of elements of the collection. Lagerfeld's collections always take a simple idea as their starting point. This time round, it's the not-so-humble zip. You know, you can close the sleeves, you can open them, you can open the skirt, and the leg is much more beautiful in profile. Here, it makes an endless leg, and you have the mini skirt under it. The total look with the little, uh, little boots, sometimes the boy, the gloves, the hair, everything, I think, matches very well. Haute Couture would be impossible without the artistic expertise of Paris's specialist workshops. A savoir-faire on full display amongst the paving stones, love locks and sunsets of Lagerfeld's miniature Paris. Innovation is also king. One new fabric on show is comprised of sheets of aluminium caught between two layers of lace. Every collection is different, every theme is different, the shapes are different, and the volumes. And each time we ask ourselves more questions. Every time we have to deal with new technical challenges. That's what makes our jobs so exciting. It's what we love about our jobs. We're never bored because we never do the same thing twice. The show comes to a close with an unusual take on the classic wedding dress. It's green. For the first time in 15 years, it's a black model wearing it. Green, it's the color of hope. <laughs> and to get married, you need to be hopeful. In a first for the label, Chanel has published its annual revenue. At 8 billion euros, it's up 11% on last year. Dior, the other great luxury giant, revealed its haute couture collection at Paris's Rodin Museum. The space was extravagantly done up inspired by last year's Dior retrospective at the capital's Decorative Arts Museum. The exhibition marked the label's 70th birthday and attracted a record 700,000 visitors. Some of the most magical elements of the exhibition were those amazing fabrics, the fabrics I worked on for almost 25 years. All the expertise and artistry of the house can be seen in those fabrics. That's how designers and workshops turn drawings into reality. And that's something that's really unique to haute couture. Maria Grazia Curie's first collections were resolutely feminist. This one has retained that defiant attitude. It was like princess dresses that also felt like a, a warrior. Like it was your, your, your princess dresses, like your armor. If I wore one of those dresses, I think it would change me. Do you know what I mean? It would change your identity. It blew my mind. It broke so many boundaries and it was just different. Yeah. Groundbreaking perhaps, but also classical, with an emphasis on fine handiwork and intricate detail. I think that we have to try sometimes to use another language. In this collection, I decide to use the more the language of atelier, the travail d'atelier, less uh, scenographic, more hidden uh, luxury. For Maria Grazia Curie, haute couture is an art form that privileges imagination and freedom above all else. Now, in this time where 
uh, you go so fast and you, it's so necessary that everything uh, is uh, also really visible. In, uh, you, in couture you can do what you want because the, your audience know what I mean couture. So you are really free because uh, they don't come because they see a picture. They come because they know what I mean couture. So in this case, I think it's avant-garde. So is Dior really the latest face of the fashion avant-garde? Um, yes and no. I mean, I think what this, show, what this just showed us is that it, there's avant-garde in there, but there's also a kind, of, um, a kind of realism. And I think she's managed to do both things. So she's merged both things in this show. And it's, it, it's quite lovely, but I think avant-garde is also a good thing. Given their price tags, few women will ever get their hands on real old couture. But these collections will no doubt be seen and copied around the world.